Hello, Internet, and welcome to what will hopefully be my 1,000th video on my channel. Yes, that is right, 1,000. I honestly can't believe I've survived this long. Throughout the years, I've grown a little bit here and there from the videos I've made, and as well as learned a couple things, made some friends, and here are so and there are so, and, well, here we are episode 1000 and you might be asking why make this a reviews and rants video despite the fact i haven't done one of those in a long time main reason is this show means a lot to me final space is one of my favorite shows of all time and after the news that we that we are not getting a third i mean a fourth season i've been well kind of down i had access to the show still so i could rewatch the episodes but at the point, I was just kind of feeling not great. But then I realized that I still enjoy the show, rewatched it for this review, and I must say, it still is one of my favorites. And with that, we will now go over what is possibly the best and darkest season of the show. So yeah, yeah. Here's, what, here's what we're doing. I'm going to go over the plot, go over how I feel, go over the characters, and overall, I'll, I'll th say what my opinion is of the season as a whole. Well, keep in mind this is all my opinions, and spoiler result. Well, spoiler alert in progress. Anyway, let's go right in. And season, season 3, E's main focus is staying alive and trying to escape it, for the crew to escape Final Space. And it takes, and it does not hold back as it dives right in at season two with Invictus, hunting, just chasing down, down the crew with with Gary and Quinn, and right outside the ship, ready for Invictus to disintegrate right off the bat. Yeah, and you know this this is not the real body of Invictus because well, it looks like the weird ghost thing we saw all last season, but but let's get right into the fact that Mooncake could not blast Invictus, and that, uh, well, that kind of spells doom for or their planet-destroying super weapon, especially since that wasn't even the real Invictus. But thanks to Bolo and Ava, the crew stays, stays alive, unfortunately losing the Crimson Light and Ava in the process. Yeah, that was, uh, kind of sad, all things considered. I actually really like the Crimson Light, and I think it's my favorite of the ships that we see. But, uh, yeah, moving forward. A month passes, the crew has been surviving off these weird worm things, things and Quinn is revealed to have Final Space Poisoning. A poison that at, at lasts the longer you're in Final Space and just slowly kills you. But uh, then we see a weird cyborg creature who's had it for who knows how long and has survived, but uh, that's questionable at best. The crew gets separate due to an attack from Zombie Garys. Yes, Zombie Garys. Because every time, uh, in every timeline, or at least most of the timelines from what I can tell, Gary is the one who closes the breach and then dies in the process, leaving Invictus with plenty of bodies to toss at at the crew. The crew separates, aids into two group, to three groups actually, because, well, that's just how it is. Is Gary, Quinn, Hen, Hugh, and Kevin all go to one of the one of the Earths. Emphasis on one of them because uh, I'll get right back into that in a second. But then we got a, a Tribor who has a child, Quatronostro, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right because I honestly don't know if I am. Who speaks only Spanish? Thank God for subtitles, by the way, because I barely remember anything from Spanish class. Sad. And then we got the rest of the crew, which consists of Hugh, I mean, not Hugh, uh, I, my mind is in the wrong spot, Fox, Ash, Cheryl, Gary's mom, um, Avocado, and Little Cotto. So, separating into somewhat two dynamics, but I'll go over them as well as I can. I'm starting with Gary's crew. They go onto the destroyed Earth, Earth trying to find a ship. Go to Paris, Hugh's dream is resolved, great callback to season one. Something I will mention right now is that this season is full of amazing callbacks to the earlier seasons, and sometimes they can get, sometimes callbacks can be annoying, but I will say for a fact, this, the callback hack for 
her hue wanting to transfer as being go to Paris, and, well, a callback involving Gary later on, which, which will lead to one of my favorite episodes of the season, is, well, is great. That's all I'll say. Moving forward, though, they meet Kevin Van Newton, a.k.a. the creator of the Kevin Bots. And Gary immediately wants to kill him. Go figure. But good thing he doesn't, all things considered, because Kevin Van Newton ha was instructed by Nightfall herself to make a new ship for the crew known as the Galaxy 2. Or Dragonhawk 5. Honestly, I kind of like Dragonhawk 5 a little bit better, but hey, that's just me. Moving forward to the next page of my script here. Hugh then takes over or the role as AI since Ava is gone. Depressing. Um, while this is happening, I actually forgot to mention this. Mooncake has been with Bolo because Bolo said that Gary was dead, causing King Mooncake to go off with, with Bolo to go kill some Titans. I don't know how many times they did end up killing. I We can say at least two. One nameless Titan, and then the Titan Oreskes, who tried to brainwash uh, Cheryl into giving him the dimensional keys. I do wonder what would have happened in that case. But that's something else. Else entirely. The crew who separates from Bolo, and Bolo is revealed to have a little bit of mind poisoning. A little gift from his former friend, Titan. But uh, moving forward to the avocado side of the team, the Lord Commander has returned from his murder, quote-unquote, from season, season 2. And more powerful than ever with Invictus supercharging him and healing his wounds so he less looks less like a walking corpse. Kind of fitting. Kind of weird how he gets its healed, healed into looking like a normal alien after being a corpse for so long in a season that's full of walking corpses. But yeah, thanks to Lord Commander's mind powers, we learn more about Avocado, Ho's backstory, and how he met the Lord Commander. And that involved giving Ventrexia, his home planet, to Lord Commander by murdering the king and queen. Yeah, little Avocado Ho hears this and honestly shrugs it off. But that's not the big deal. We move forward, we all, we find out who little Kato belong, who truly is in this flashback, and I'm gonna hold off on saying that because it's more important later on. Now, Lord Commander brings everyone to the Prison of Invictus, as I will call it, because I honestly don't remember what it's called. There, and in this place, people are chained up for Invictus to possess them, and for Invictus to use their souls as power. And uh, and Cheryl escaped almost immediately. Let's figure. Let's be real here. If anyone were to escape, it would be Ash or Cheryl. Uh, speaking of Ash, though, she finds out that her powers are from Invictus and is no match for the Lord Commander because of it, who immediately breaks her hands, causing some very annoying issues later. Her, and well, while this is ha while this is happening. Oh shoot, where am I? My skirt just went all, the, all over the place. Hey, for a second. Um, I forgot to mention one other character. <laughs> um, sorry. Uh, wow. I try to record the script as best as I can, but, and, but I'm also not feeling great. Moving forward. Uh, Gary, Quinn, Mooncake, and surprisingly a new character, Biscuit, who is the intern of Kevin Van Noon, stuck, who, st who decided to join, join, join up with the crew. Uh, great addition, by the way. I love his character. You'll find out more about him as I go. He he tells Gary the one thing that I've questioned ever since he got his robot arm. What can it do? And because of of that little thing, Gary arrives and arrives and used his arm to transform into a gun, shooting the Lord Commander in the god dang head. And honestly, that was very satisfying to watch. And then his head regenerated. Yeah. I don't know why. Don't know how. But he is basically immortal while working with Invictus. Terrifying. The team squad rescues who's Avocado, Little Cotto, and well, and Ash. But unfortunately, Fox is possessed, and Ash can't do anything because of her broken hands, and the crew has to leave him behind. Yeah. That was uh pretty dark. 
The episode immediately kicks into the Lord Commander chasing after the crew, and then the crew has to light fold away, but with navigation down, they end up being stuck in a black hole that leads directly to Invictus. And this black hole, combined with the final space poisoning Quint is going under her, finally reveals exactly who her family is. Her sister, her Avery, and her mother, who I don't know the name of. Both are tough, but uh, her mom's clearly a stone-cold soldier-type mom, which is... I have no problem with anyone's mothering, but honestly, there are limits. Like sho like shoving your kid in a place with a bunch of corpses to try to teach them a lesson. Yeah. Not great. Honestly, though, I do love this flashback because it definitely fleshed out Quint's character. Because one of my complaints with Season 1 is that how often her character seemed reset after each episode like from trusting to not trusting to trusting to not trusting and so on and so forth until the, until the, like the last three episodes but eh, that's me though with this happening with this happening though ash ash started to feel invictus's presence somehow healed her hands which i guess that's fine i don't know how that i don't know how her powers work honestly and then dives directly into a black hole to uh, face Invictus, while the crew light folds out of there to avoid getting, getting found by it, so that way they don't die. Speaking of dying, Quinn goes under the final space poisoning in full force, so crew's quick, the crew quickly comes up with a plan to get a chip that can heal at, heal her final space poisoning. Long story short, they do it, do it, and now she has a chip that makes her similar to Nightfall, but... And that kind of dives into the fact that Quinn thinks that this is becoming someone else. Someone that she might be forced to be. And more on that as we go, but yeah. Moving ahead to the next episode. Moving ahead, though. Ash has gone... Ash, after confronting Invictus, got super-powered and a redesign that I honestly feel met about. Like, I think it's okay... I'm so used to Ash's actual design, and I like that character as is. And after this redesign, she kind of switches to a slightly different type of character. One that I'm not a huge fan of. Of, But we'll move forward with that as we go. But Ash returns to the crew, who the weird gatekeeper from season one Hunt shows up to let tell to get the crew's help to help Bolo who's been poisoned by Invictus again I mentioned this it is the crew goes into Bolo's head Ash gets swept somewhere else in Bolo's mind mind and is manipulated by a fake version of Bolo oh who's insane and also leads her to Fox who was apparently also planted there by Invictus who incidentally I guess is really good at cloaking their possession considering their being that Fox had had no eyes and still told his backstory, or had no purple eyes. Speaking of Fox, I'm honestly sad that he is very underused. Like, I actually genuinely enjoy his character in Season 2, and I think Season 3 really screwed him over. Honestly, though, his his voice actor's pretty good, and I look forward to seeing what he does as more in. Moving forward from that, though, um... Fox speaks out of character because he's possessed by Invictus. Yeah, duh. And as a result, Alt manipulates Ash into listening to him, which is so unbelievably stupid of her when she knows what happens when someone is possessed by Invictus. Yes. Gary goes to save Ash from this possessed Fox and honestly should have brought any everyone else with him because things would have gone by better if that case. But nope, just him. And as a result, he stabs Fox, and Invictus does not want to heal Fox because this was all part of its plan. Gary did not uh, uh, stab Fox on purpose, by the way. It, his arm was also possessed by Invictus. God freaking dang it. Yeah. And then Ash blames Gary for all this, which I think is dumb, and I have reasons why I'm against that. But the episode following Fox's death is actually my favorite of the season and is currently in the running for my favorite of the series. Forgiveness is what it's called. And it is a huge episode. Because it contains not much physical conflict except for a beatdown between Gary and Avocado, 
who just beat their evolving crap out of each other because of the truth that Avocado's been hiding. That little Kado is not actually his son and as, is actually the prince of Ventrexia. And Avocado murdered his parents. Gary finds out and they just duke it out. Like, very much so. And honestly, Gary fights so much better, which is proof that he's learned since season one. And honestly, that Gary could not fight anything, let's be real. And yes, Avocado is not going to actually try to kill Gary, but still. These two fight it out to a point where they then just talk about how Little Kato is going to be destroyed after all this, and how they have to prove to be better. And it brings up Gary's line from season one during probably the most sad episode of that season, that it's back to back for life. And that's, I'm not going to lie here, when I heard that in the season three trailer, back in whenever this dropped, I don't even remember, I lost my dang mind because that was the probably my favorite callback to the earlier seasons. And on the other side of this episode, Ash meets a weird glowing energy speck of light which might be the anti-Invictus that I've always said Ash might be. But a uh, fun fact, I actually did call in a YouTube comment a couple years ago, or a, while, a bit ago during Season 3, that if Invictus got Ash, it will all be over. <laughs> uh, moving forward. But Ash makes a friend who's possibly a love interest. I don't even know. Mooncake shows up, Ash returns, and, they, and she and Gary just talk for a little bit. And it's a little bit of forgiveness, and do I think it's rushed? Hell no, because it's small bits. And even Gary says that he thinks there's hope in the next episode, so yeah. The following episode is actually very tame compared to the previous one, with only a couple things here and there. Here, Clarence reappears in, this, in the series to open up the other side of the hyper- dimensional tunnel or however you pronounce that i would just call it a stargate it's probably easier which is their one-way ticket to getting out of final space they open a portal on their end and then and they and then clarence opens a portal on his end they send a message that reaches everyone in the universe but it's focused mostly on clarence and said message brings back a couple characters from the past who don't exactly like gary or clarence Bunch of conflict and shoes involving murdering a lot of things, mostly Kevin's, from what I can tell. And it is open, and Clarence dies. The following thing is the reveal. Well, actually, we'll, we'll talk about that for a second. We'll talk about that in a second. Then we got Tribor's whole storyline. He's always he's had a bit of a side story with Quatrenostro. Quatrenostro. I don't freaking know. I'm sorry, but yeah. These two have had a little bit of a side storyline, trying to figure out who the Great Liberator is, which in reality is just both of them, and, um, and they lead a bunch of species out of Final Space. I have no idea how they've survived so long. Maybe they're just immune to it. Maybe they live in Final Space. I don't know. But they lead a whole, whole group of people out of Final Space, and, and then just out of most of the se rest of the season. Yeah. But... And then we got the reveal of the Kevin Nets, which, spoiler alert, uh, isn't great. The Kevin Nets is supposedly a weapon that can defeat Titans, so, and because of that, the crew stays behind to deal with Illith to try to use it. And yes, that's a good idea, but let's keep in mind that back in the regular, back on in regular space, you have a more heavy chance of creating weapons that can kill Titans without the need of, well, the need of trying to avoid death. And anyway, this next episode reveals quite a bit. Not only does the reveal of the Kevinet being made it happen, but the Lord Commander fi er, 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 appears and finds out that there is a Titan incubating in the Earth. And because of the Lord Commander's one goal is to become a Titan, he immediately dives down towards it. And Avocado, Little Cotto, Cheryl, and Biscuit, and Kevin, I think. I don't know, I he does nothing. Go to try to stop him with a huge freaking bomb. Well, huge isn't powerful, not huge isn't giant. And, well, 
that's pretty fun. You, you, you watch how most of the episodes plays out with them tracing after or, or, or the Lord Commander and Gary and Quinn going to activate the Kevin Knight with the help of Bolo. Can I just say I love Bolo's character? Like, he's genuinely funny on sometimes, especially when he just tries to casually talk to some people. It's... I like it. But sadly... <sighs> I have some depression right now. Because the next episode resolved, uh, uh, continues off of what happens in the end of this episode, which was the Kevin Net being destroyed and the Lord Commander being a Titan. And, yeah. Lord Commander does not hesitate to immediately murder Bolo, which, god dang, that is heartbreaking. Like, even more than Fox's death, which just was a waste of a character, in my opinion. And the episode owed, owed falls with Quinn having the consequences of her actions, which is the fact that everyone, all oh, the whole crew, except for Ash, weirdly enough, and Biscuit, who also was questioned, I don't understand how he doesn't have final space poisoning, it was never explained, um, have, the, have the poisoning, which is killing them. And as a result, a lot of problems, problems involving conflict between Ash and the crew, I mean Ash, uh, Quinn and the crew, God, I am tired, uh, and shoe. And the crew then decides to bail out and get find the gate. Eight. Unfortunately, though, Ash is very much doesn't like the idea of Quinn doing this, considering it seems like an anti-Nightfall move. And this is something I want to bring up. Quinn and Nightfall. Alternate timeline characters. Quinn is her could be her own version of Nightfall at one day, if she feels like it. But she is not the Nightfall that we've been hung that we hung out with all last season. That's not how these work. But, uh, yeah. The pre-episode to the finale is very drawn towards the end. The end results in the bridge being overcharged by Mooncake, oops, and then in front eyeing out, causing more problems with the crew against its Quinn, and Ash is flat out getting closer and closer to the edge, we'll say. And after she overhears Gary and Avocado talking about who, what uh, Avocado did to Little Kato's real parents, that was the breaking point. And at that point, well, all is all. Lines were crossed. A Ash takes Little Kato away. And, well, Gary, Gary, Avocado, and Hugh, thank you, who, and, well, not really, and Biscuit, but something later, go to go save him. They try to talk it out, talk it out. Unfortunately, Ash is not willing to talk out at this point. She has completely lost her damn mind. mind. And then the cool part happens. Biscuit reveals that his Hugh project he's been working on all this season is a cool new body for Hugh to, well, save the have have Gary and Avocado. Lord Commander shows up, uh, up to be well. I don't even know. I think he was going to try to kill Invictus, which very much will fail. Hell. And Ash decides to take him out right then and there. Crew escapes. Ash chases after. Mooncake tries to stop her. Her The bridge is opened by Tribor. Or thank you. Ooh, after they properly charge it. Quinn then reveal, Qu Quinn finally realizes that uh, she's not becoming someone else. It's just the next evolution in her life. And Ash does the unforgivable. She takes Mooncake's power and uses it to free Invictus. <sighs> and Invictus breaks free out of final space after the crew exits it. And, and the Lord Commander is trapped in a cube, like Bolo. <sighs> I'm sorry, this is... <sighs> this is the end. That is literally how the series ends. It ends with Invictus breaking out. And there's no conclusion. Old Rogers is trying his hardest to conclude it, and I have faith that he will one day. And that's why I will continue to support. But that's just how it is. This season was overall probably my second favorite season. Only because I liked season two's balance of comedy and seriousness to a point where it felt really... It felt more balanced, in my opinion. While season three still had the heart of what made Final Space its own comedy, but overall still had quite a bit of darkness to it. Now, 
I'm going to go ahead and reveal what's the major points of the season. Ash's corruption was, while I think stupid in some places, somewhat well done. But I liked how it, I liked how it flowed through. It was, it felt almost like it was bound to happen. But I was really hoping she would be a little bit smarter than this. Avocado's past coming back to bite him and honestly more develop his character was one of the better moments and how Gary will always stand by his side. Quinn's development into who her the next stage and realizing she's not going to become Nightfall. She's just becoming more of who she is. And Gary, well, oh boy. Gary probably has the most development with characters this whole season. Little Kato, he's always been somewhat slowly e -ta -ta -e -e more... Well, their character development's kind of a solid. Gary's Gary kind of just is the main focus more or towards the character development side of things with not just as, as Quinn, but also with Ash and Avocado. The major points of the season. Although I will have to mention one thing, the show's great and strong points are its characters, especially this season, but it's also their weaker points. Because, like I said before, Fox gets underused, Tribor doesn't really do much except for go help people and then open the bridge at the end, and Cheryl did literally almost nothing this entire season. Yeah. Not much I can say about that, unfortunately. Uh, overall, though, I still love this show, and I probably will not change this anytime soon. But, uh, yeah. We're nearing the end of my script here, so... And we're... Wow, we are... Uh, we've done this for... Talked about this for a while. Anyway... Hey, this mo this show is, will always be full of... Of great moments... It's... It's beautiful music... And character. Just character. Overall, I would give this show... This season an 8 out of 10. Well, I would give this show a 9 out of 10 as a whole. Especially season 2. And, uh... Yeah. I still don't understand why this was cancelled. It's such a great show. But, uh, yeah, I hope, hope you all enjoyed this video of me talking out my emotions while I'm partially still recovering from game, having a cold. Uh, yeah, this has been Final Space Season 3 re Review and Rants. I have one more Final Space video I would like to do, but I'm not sure when I'll get to that. For now, though, peace out, people.